You know, my favorite movie theories are anything to do with Christopher Walken. Yes, come on ladies, show me a movie, boom bang, come on. Okay, well that sounded crazy, but what's even crazier is some of the most amazing and insane theories that the internet has come up with about some of the most famous movies of all time that will completely change the way you look at these movies. Seriously, get ready for these. Here are 10 crazy movie theories that will blow your mind. Number 10 is more than one Bond. Whether it's Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Daniel Craig, or any of the other men who have donned the Super Spice tuxedo, James Bond is an iconic character. Since 1962, when Connery first took on the role, Bond has appeared with several different faces, even going back to a previous actor's after that actor left the franchise. And while it could simply be explained as asking the audience to suspend disbelief that his features, age, and accent keep changing, there's a fan theory that suggests that James Bond isn't a specific person at all. What if the title is just that, a title? And it's given to a new spy along with the 007 status when the previous one dies or retires. It would explain the different appearances and how Connery can somehow keep coming back to the role. Money Penny, why don't you take off that blouse so I can get to know you better? Number nine is Sandy Drowns. The 1978 musical Grease redefined the genre, and many of its songs are still stuck in people's heads. A Grease Lightning! Oh, sorry. It also raised questions about why nobody ever seems to break into song while discussing things. To answer it, a theory formed that sounds pretty solid. Basically, it says that Sandy did actually drown at the beginning of the film, and everything that unfolds is her oxygen-deprived brain making her hallucinate, while Danny tries desperately to resuscitate her on the beach. Yeah, this one's kind of dark. In the end, as the two lovers drive away from their friends waving goodbye, and the car rises into the clouds for some reason, that's Sandy letting go and ultimately dying. Creator Jim Jacobs heard about the rumor and quickly squashed it, though many still believe that he's wrong. I mean, what does the guy that made the whole thing know anyway, you know? Mwah. Number eight is In Cameron's Head. On the surface, it seems like Ferris Bueller's Day Off is just a story about a kid who wants a day off school and has an adventure and winds up putting himself center stage in a parade. You know, pretty standard day for the rest of us. But there's another way fans are seeing the movie and it involves the hero of it, Ferris himself, not actually existing at all. Yes, if the theory is correct, then everything that transpires is in Cameron's head and his best friend Bueller is, in fact, just the depressed teenager's alter ego, a version of himself that he wants to be, but he can't. Think about it, in a matter of hours, the three teens seem to get all around Chicago, which is impossible to do in such a short time, and in the end, the entire imagined ordeal does what it was meant to do, force Cameron to stand up to his father. Bueller, Bueller, no, you're not real, kid. Bueller. Number seven is Bill's Spared. At the end of the second volume in Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill film, we see protagonist Beatrix Kiddo use a famously feared move, the five-point palm exploding heart technique. She does this to end the life of Bill, the man responsible for the deaths of her loved ones. But if you buy into one particular fan theory, she could not have performed that move, and thus, Bill faked dying as a gesture that Kiddo could take her child and he would not come after her. Essentially, the pair forgave each other. Bill states earlier in the film that pain never teaches the deadly move to anyone, and if you look closely, his feet have moved when his body is shown again later. Plus, as the final credits roll, while all the other assassins' names are crossed off, David Kerrigan, who plays Bill, is not, suggesting that he's not dead. Kill Bill 3? Kill Bill 3? Who's ready for it? Yes! Number 6 is All in the Future. With all of its talk of Arabian Nights, it's pretty clear that the animated film Aladdin and its sequels all took place in the past. However, as many fans have since pointed out, there are a number of inconsistencies that more so support the fact that the Disney film actually takes place in the future. In fact, a very distant future. For example, look no further than the late Robin Williams' amazing performance as the genie. When he's transforming Aladdin into a prince, he quickly measures him, stating that his look is two-thirds century, but earlier in the film, he claims to have been trapped in the lamp for 10,000 years. This would mean that, at the earliest, the 
date would have been in the 10,300s. And 83 centuries from now, apparently people have not turned their backs on technology, but totally embraced magic. But do they have cell phones that have a battery that can last more than a day? Seriously, it's 2018, let's get on that. Number five is Jack is a Time Traveler. Since its release on December 19, 1997, Titanic has drawn a number of tears from viewers and nearly an equal number of confused stares. I mean, there was so much room on that door for Rose. But one fan theory adds a big splash of sci-fi, claiming that Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Jack Dawson, is not just a poor artist, but a time traveler from the future. The theory says he had to gamble for his ticket because he had no currency for that time period. He claims that he's been fishing in Lake Wissota and will take Rose on the roller coaster on Santa Monica Pier, however, neither of which existed when the ship sank. Plus, his hairstyle, cigarettes, and backpack were all not around until many years later. Could it be that he was sent back to stop Rose from taking her own life? It makes more sense than you might think. I'll never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. Oh, I let go. Yeah, you're frozen. Okay, bye. Number four is Little Iron Man. In the climax of Iron Man 2, the armored Tony Stark is battling a horde of killer robots while trying to protect the citizens who are attending his company's expo. But during the fight, one of the machines targets a young boy who's dressed up cosplay style like Iron Man himself. Before it can vaporize the poor child, the real Iron Man lands, blasts the bot into pieces and comments, nice work kid, before flying off again. And while you might think that that's the last time that we see the young character, it may surprise you to learn it's not. In fact, he's got his own movie now. Apparently, the wannabe superhero is none other than Peter Parker. Incredibly, this theory was made even more popular when Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland, claimed it was true in June of 2017. Is your mind blown yet? Amazing, because we got three more, so put it back together and keep going. Number three is Demons. At first viewing, M. Night Shyamalan's horror thriller Signs appears to be a film about an ex-priest who's turned his back on his faith to support his suddenly smaller family, only to then be faced with an alien invasion. You know, average everyday stuff. But a popular fan theory suggests that what Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix's characters are fighting off aren't aliens at all, but demons. The first piece of evidence to back this idea is that in order to defeat the invaders, a series of events has to perfectly line up, including several glasses of water randomly being left all over the house and a baseball bat being nearby. Now are these truly random or an angel intervention? Plus, why would water burn the creatures when air doesn't? Perhaps all of this water that's in the priest's home was blessed and therefore deadly to demons. Number two is Harry makes people evil. Here's a question for all the Harry Potter fans out there. Would the Dursleys have been the awful human beings they appeared to be if they'd never taken Harry in in the first place? While many may feel that they were truly terrible from their cores from the beginning, an enlightening point of view has quickly spread amongst the fandom, which claims that the only reason the family turned on the lightning-scarred orphan was because he was, in fact, a horcrux. When Volda, uh, I mean, he who shall not be named, attempted to kill Harry and instead forced a piece of his shattered soul into him, he imbued Mr. Potter with some evil that festered inside of him. Harry may not have been conscious of this, but the evil's effects took hold on those who spent large amounts of time near him. Thus, the Dursleys could have been nice people if not for adopting Harry Potter. <laughs> and number one is Wallace's soul. Considered one of the biggest mysteries purposefully left behind by a film, the contents of the briefcase and the Quentin Tarantino picture Pulp Fiction have had a great number of people speculating since its release on October 14, 1994. However, one fan theory has apparently found its way to the top of likely suspects, and it claims that the briefcase actually contains gangster Marcellus Wallace's soul. The first time that we as viewers see Wallace, it's just a shot of the back of his head, complete with a bandage covering one spot, theoretically the place where the devil normally removes the soul from a human body. Then, whenever we see the briefcase open, its contents are off camera, but we get to see a golden glow and the amazed look on people's faces as they stare at wonder at it. Cause you know, the soul's a beautiful thing. And also, what does Marcellus Wallace look like? Does he look like a- Okay, no, I don't want to get demonetized. We'll move on. <laughs> 